What's up, YouTube? I'm Thonfo, back with another leaky video. This one's good. Have you ever seen your own retinal vessels directly? I was talking with some other Optho residents recently and was surprised to find that they hadn't experienced this phenomenon during an eye exam where they get a flash of their own retinal vasculature. They get a shadow during the slit lamp exam. And uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty striking. Um, if you're not the resident, this is something you've got to do. So stay tuned. I'll make this video less than five minutes. It'll definitely be worth your while. Not only is it a fun thing to do on yourself, but it's something you can do at cocktail parties with friends on the weekend, maybe this weekend. And then it's also something, something you can do uh, with patients. Maybe the patient's been waiting for a while. Maybe they're bummed because they're going to get another injection for AMD. Who knows? But maybe you can brighten their day with this little trick. Okay, so first off, if you're a lay person, I want to show you, we've got this thing called the retina, which is like the film of the camera of the eyeball, if you will. It lines the back part of the eye like wallpaper on a wall, and it's got these blood vessels feeding it, running on top of it, in front of it, in front of the photoreceptors. And those blood vessels cast a shadow onto the photoreceptors. You don't notice it as you're looking out because your brain gets used to it. It's there, it's always been there, and your brain ignores it, fortunately. But if you make your, if you make what you're seeing black with a shirt, okay, it's something you can do right now as I'm talking to you. You can go into a dark room, a closet, a basement, whatever. I can do it right here in my car with the, with the in bright daylight and it still works just fine. But you have to make the background black because if you're seeing, a, it's hard to see a shadow when you're seeing light in the background, okay? So that's the point of having um, a dark environment. And you can, I think it's easiest to just grab a t-shirt, a dark colored t-shirt and throw it over your head. And then take your phone this is the light source that's gonna cast the shadow of the vessels. And you can just pull up the flashlight. And you don't, it doesn't even need to be that bright. You don't need it all the way up. You can just leave it right there, the dimmest setting. And you're gonna cast a shadow of the blood vessels like this, holding it close to the eye, about right here. And you're gonna cast that shadow onto the photoreceptors as you're looking out onto this black background and I can see my blood vessels clear as day right now I can see them emanating from the from the nerve I can see the foveal avascular zone and those are two things that I think you should you should note as you're doing this wherever your eye is looking you know you don't need to move the eye around keep the eye still move the cell phone move the light source whatever you're using and you'll notice right where the eye right where you happen to be looking there's no vessels there. We don't want them in the way of our central vision. And then number two, if you shine the light towards the nerve, you just, you can't quite see the nerve. That's the blind spot. Makes perfect sense. The nerve obviously would cast a huge shadow, but there's no photoreceptors behind it to detect that shadow. So it's pretty neat. You can also do this at a slit lamp. So let me show you that right now. So there's three key steps to make this really work. And when it works, it is profound. It'll blow your mind, okay? It's as if you're looking at a three-dimensional autofluorescent photo of your own fundus in real time, okay? If you don't believe me, you just gotta try this. Um, but there's three key things that you gotta get right in order to make this uh, so profound. Number one is turn the lights off like we're doing here, okay? So step one is kill the lights. Even kill the monitors if you want for a better effect. Okay, we're going to do this in Chris's right eye. Chris is one of my co-residents here. So let's go to the other eye. Let's tell him to cover this eye. Not just close it. I like to have them cover it with their fingers. That way there's no strain on the other eye. We don't want there to be any strain during this exercise. So have them cover it with their hand. Yeah, Chris, 
covering his eyes here. Beautiful fingernails. Flip back over to the right eye, okay? So step one, dark room. Step two, cover the eye. Step three, get the beam, a tall, skinny beam, not too skinny, you know, decently skinny, and then just sweep back and forth and keep the beam going through the pupil the whole time as you sweep from side to side. That's key number three, is keeping the beam in the pupil. And I'm focused on the lens here. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the lens, but that's just to give you a ballpark. And I like to have people look up. If there was a key number four, I would say looking up. And when you look up, it gets the light source out from the center of your vision and keeps it from sort of blinding you there. In other words, when the light source, if you're looking straight ahead, when it streaks across your field of view, it leaves an after image that sort of bleaches the retina and interferes with the picture of your funness that you're seeing. So I like to just look up slightly. They'll have to raise the slit lamp a little bit so that the so the beam is go going through the pupil still. But uh, yeah, check this out. And once you do it, your mind is blown. You blow somebody else's mind. Come back, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment, do something for me. It's much appreciated. And I'll see you all next week. Peace.